Welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Daryl Green. Joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Andy Osho, and Russell Howard, and Andrew Maxwell, Hugh Dennis, and Stuart Francis. We start, as ever, with our round called Headliners. Here's a picture of former Prime Minister Tony Blair recently. But what does BGBC stand for? Is, Is it. Britain's greatest bullshitter celebrates. <laughs> <laughs> Is it in fact Blair's guilt free, blood stained conscience? <laughs> Is it? That was a lovely laugh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Is he just suggesting what he thinks the next stage in the world should be, the next thing that should happen? Is it bomb Germany, bomb China? <laughs> It. That would have been an amazing turn in the inquiry. So, if yeah. just randomly picked countries and went, yeah, if I was still in power, oh, yeah, you'd be gone. <laughs> uh, hey, gang, is it uh, Blair? <laughs> Great Britain's catastrophe. <laughs> oh, I'll is go it just there. the description of him? Is it like balder, greyer, besotted by cash? <laughs> oh, is, it... <laughs> is it Blair given blue cordon? You see in the picture. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's me. Is it in fact everything the British Army didn't have when we went to war? Bullets, yeah. guns, <laughs> bombs, choppers. Is it Bushy's grinning bum chum? <laughs> <laughs> Would somebody give me the answer? Blair yeah. grilled by Chilcot. Very good. Well done, Andy. <laughs> Yes, the answer I was looking for was Blair grilled by Chilcot. This is Tony Blair's much-anticipated appearance before the Chilcot inquiry to give his account of the run-up to the Iraq war. Blair spent six hours testifying in front of the panel and declared that he had no regrets about ousting Saddam Hussein. Is grilled the right word? Well, not really. It says <clears throat> a lot about the government inquiry that Fern Britain got more out of him than they did. <laughs> it's unbelievable, though, isn't it? You know, you have a government inquiry trying to make him tell the truth about the war, and he didn't, and Fern Britain went, oh, come on. He went, yeah, all right, I don't know. What, <laughs> what we should do is get Alan Titchmarsh just nice him. Come on, pickle, did Saddam <laughs> have the bombs? I did it, Alan, I did it. <laughs> the trouble was, wasn't it? Basically, the trouble was that the only lawyer present, the only one trained in <clears throat> cross-examination, was the one who was, in fact, being interviewed. Yes, you know, yes, thinking, yes, yes. You know, they looked at the committee and they were so useless, they thought, should have got rid of the oldest one and just brought in Alicia Dixon instead. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't trying to get the truth out of Blair. They were not going to try and... not trying to find out who lied. The whole point of the committee is to find out if any lessons can be learned about the invasion of Iraq. So it's going to be a very short report. Don't. <laughs> I think what's really difficult for us to swallow is that he appears to have been swayed <laughs> by Bush. It's <clears throat> incredible because Bush wrote him letters. Imagine those letters. Dear Tony, here is a picture of a horse. <laughs> <laughs> and yet that's who you went with. That's the thing incredible, you know? Blair actually got heckled. Yeah, it, it's a bit harder for politicians because they can't deal with heckling in much the same way. Yeah. Blair couldn't very well turn round and go, going in was the right thing to do. As I said to your mum last night... <laughs> In Iraq, though, the main, the main claim, the main reason we went to war was this 45-minute claim. That's what swayed yeah. everyone. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, what has come out recently is that that 45-minute claim... Do you know where the intelligence came from for that? Oh, it came yeah. from an Iraqi minicab driver. <laughs> it's unbelievable, isn't it? Why would you take intelligence from an Iraqi minicab driver? It's on timing. Why would you take it from <laughs> a minicab driver on top? When will the missiles arrive? Well, 45 minutes. <laughs> about then. We're still waiting for the missiles. They're just <laughs> coming around the corner yeah. now. <laughs> well, when he was at university, he was actually part of a band which was called Ugly Rumours. And in fact, 30 years later, it was Ugly <clears> Rumours. <throat> that led us to war. 
If only back at university the band had been called Leave It Lads, he's probably bluffing. <laughs> Why is Blair in the money at the moment? He has a fragrance. He does? He has a fragrance? <laughs> he has a fragrance out that is called Denial. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In other news, whose gagging order was overturned this week? Oh, this is the story of the week. Yeah. John Terry. And oh, it's John so Terry. But it's such a... There he is. Oh, <laughs> excellent. Oh. That's his teammates spitting on him. Uh -huh. you bastard. <laughs> this is the news that the High Court has overturned a super injunction preventing England captain Terry from being named in a sex scandal. Terry's alleged to have had an affair with an ex-girlfriend of former Chelsea teammate Wayne Bridge. It's such a non-story, isn't it? Oh, footballers shagging around. Just like finding out, oh, the BMP don't like Dizzy Rascal. <laughs> <laughs> Just, it's such a non-story, and people go, oh, we you reckon the fans will forgive him? As if football fans care. All they do is sing. That's all football fans do. They're like an Asbo choir. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, um, John Terry's going to have to apologise to, to Capello as well for what he's done, but I think, well, why is he apologising to Capello? He's Italian. He's going to expect this behaviour. <laughs> really. Back in his country, he'd get made Prime Minister or something. <laughs> <laughs> I did notice, though, that Man City players actually had their, a shirt on underneath which said Team Bridge. Yeah, that's true. And I, I wasn't quite sure what they were actually trying to say with that. Whether they were trying to show solidarity with Wayne Bridge or whether they were all trying to say, yes, we've shagged her as well. <laughs> I, 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 feel sorry for, uh, I feel sorry for his, his parents. When, when his mom read the headlines in the paper mm. she stole, she, she immediately... <laughs> She immediately phoned her husband uh, on his mobile, the, the family mobile, not the one he uses for the drug deals, and said, where have we gone wrong with this one? <laughs> yeah, there is, a, I mean, people wonder what the implications of this were. The, uh, obviously, uh, Terry is both the captain and also the captain of Chelsea, who, as we know, are the FA cook holders. The, uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, the, uh, but he was going on about, you know, it, one of the reasons that the super injection was overturned because it wasn't for the grounds of privacy, it was because of his sponsorship. Yeah. Terry doesn't actually get that many sponsorships. Yeah, People yeah. don't actually align themselves to John Terry anyway. Mm -hmm. There are no John Terry aftershaves uh, because they'd be called the salty tears of John <laughs> Terry or concussion. By John Terry, yes. Yeah, what's funny, people say, how could he cheat on his wife? And you go, well, the girl was a French underwear model, which is possibly like the three most erotic words to hear as a uh, man. No, uh, French underwear model. That's like saying to a dog, walkies, din dins, belly rub. <laughs> Terry, Terry was described, wasn't he, as a serial womanizer, brawler, and drinker. And you're thinking, surely then, he's perfect to represent England. <laughs> <laughs> there is, but, but there is, a, like, Emma, surely there's something wrong with the fact that the paper is in this country. Uh, every time England is about to compete in a major tournament and has any chance, scupper it by trying to screw over the team. Surely that's the thing. But maybe, maybe he'd actually he... be quite good as captain, wouldn't he? You know, still there. Because you know, that's the whole idea, isn't it? If you're captain, you're supposed to be able to bollock members of your team. Terry can still be captain. You make that mistake again, I'll shag your missus. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of that round, the points go to Russell, Andy and Andy. <laughs> Our next round is called Newsreel. We play in a recent piece of footage featuring people in the news and ask Hugh to suggest what might be being said. This week's clip features the royal family. Well, uh, how are you doing? How are you doing? Well, what can I tell you? Well, the Democrats had a choice between a woman and a black man. And they went for the black man. Can you believe it? <laughs> well, I can't, um... I can't really believe that was the choice. <laughs> yes, well, how charming. Um, <clears throat> does anybody know who that was? Was that... <laughs> was that Judith Chalmers? <laughs> bloody dreadful woman. Oh, hello, darling. Eyebrows still black, I see. <laughs> when they go white, we'll know we're all in the shit. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> oh. Oh, uh, terribly sorry, I dropped my oyster card. Anyway, can't wait. I'm going to see the Queen, I think. Uh... Hello. Are you a giant? <laughs> oh, God, I hate these things. Oh, God. So tedious. I'd much rather be doing something else, like shooting someone or... <laughs> oh, hang on. No, wait a minute. This is the guy I'm waiting for. I'm absolutely starving. I'll have two lamb and a pressure iron. Then, uh, hurry up about it. Philip, please 
please. That is the President of India. Yes, that's the restaurant we always go to. I... <laughs> These are the leaders of the free world. Please try not to say anything offensive. Oh, I never do. What do you mean? Oh, my God, there are thousands of them. <laughs> it's like bloody Dover. You can't come in here. We haven't got any room. We're a tiny country. What are you thinking of? Go... Oh, oh hello. Are you Korean? <laughs> yes. I love your culture. Yes. Don't worry, I've locked up the corgis. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well done, you. <laughs> now, we play a round called... Who will be the Sheriff of Mockingham? <laughs> this game involves Andrew, Andy, Russell and Stuart. So if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is a sound of challenge. I launch the Wheel of News and wherever it chooses to stop, one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. The winner is whoever I think is the funniest. OK, here I go. The first topic, please. <clears throat> the first subject is nationality. Who wants to come in on that? Yeah, Andrew Matt. <laughs> Listen, your national identity starts where you grow up. I grew up in a place called Ireland. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, it's a good place for comedy, people. Sometimes in Ireland, you don't even have to write jokes. It is just in the newspaper. <laughs> Last year, an orangutan escaped from Dublin Zoo. And in the newspaper, and I quote, his zookeeper said, we believe he was planning it for years. <laughs> They reverse engineered his crime and they found out over the last 15 years he'd been cultivating a tree to grow against the wall of his enclosure. <laughs> what the hell kind of monkey Shawshank redemption is that? <laughs> Do we have any English people here? <laughs> Welcome, English people. <laughs> My son's English. <laughs> That's how he talks. <laughs> Hello, Dad. <laughs> Do you want to trade Pokemon cards, Dad? <laughs> Do you know how strangely baffling and oddly disappointing it is for an Irish man to have found out that he's accidentally made Englishmen? <laughs> <laughs> Seems to be set on Saxon. <laughs> Thank you very much, Andrew Axel. Wow. OK, let's spin the wheel again. The subject is family. Who wants to come in that? OK. And. Okay, so um, I grew up in a Nigerian household, and I don't know if you know, but there's a lot of strong discipline in a Nigerian household. Um, I think the best example of um, N Nigerian discipline I heard recently on the local bus, and uh, there was a woman uh, on the bus, I believe her name was Auntie, and uh, <laughs> she, she, had a, she had a little daughter with her, and the, the daughter was about four or five years old, she was messing around, and she wanted her to stop, but this is what she said, Nigerians, you see, they take discipline too far. She wanted the girl to stop, so this is what she said. She said, OK, do you want me to go to jail? <laughs> and the little girl, to be fair to her, she said, yes. <laughs> but the woman's reply was brilliant, she said, OK, so when we get home, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> then you'll not have to see me again. <laughs> The white people on the bus kind of looked like this section over here. They were kind of like, that's funny, but we're going to report that shit. Yeah. <laughs> the black people on the bus were like, very good, that's it. That's why this country's going down the toilet, you see? You see? You see? Thank you very much, Andy. Yeah. Okay. OK, that leads to Russell and Stuart. The next topic, please. OK, it's work. Who is screaming that? Where you go, Stuart? I, uh... I don't think I got the job at Microsoft. They haven't responded to my telegram. <laughs> I used to be a mime. It's only now I can talk about it. <laughs> I was a trapeze artist, but I was let go. <laughs> I was a trampoline salesman, off and on. <laughs> I made clown shoes, which was no small feat. <laughs> I quit my job as a taxidermist for doing a half-ass job. <laughs> Surprisingly, as an accountant, I was fired after only... <laughs> half an hour. I quit my job at the helium gas factory. I refuse to be spoken to in that tone. Okay, Russell, let's see what you've been left with. Let's spin the wheel. And it's shopping. 
It's a lady at the back, whooping there, just looking at a basket. <laughs> My favourite place to go shopping without doubt, though, I love budget shops like Aldi and Lidl. I love them. My mum gets so excited. One P for beans! One P for beans! There's a reason they're one P. Have you ever seen inside? There's no tomato sauce. They're just swimming in their own tears. <laughs> Help me! They're not supermarkets. They're shelters for abused food. <laughs> Broken biscuits. I was in a hobnob war. <laughs> Reformed ham. What's reformed ham? I will never commit a crime again. <laughs> manager special, manager special. You're telling me he's licking the trolleys. Get that round of points over to Andy and Russell. Our next round is called, if this is the answer, what is the question? On the board are six categories. Andy, which category would you like? Science, please. OK, your category is science. The answer is 2035. What is, is the question? Is it the number of Premiership footballers' kids who look like John Terry? <laughs> <laughs> is it, if global warming continues, when will all ginger people melt? <laughs> In fact, how many people at home are now petrified because that is, in fact, their pin code? Particularly <laughs> 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 because now my eyes are following them around the room. Yeah, there's no way you can go. I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you. Yeah, looking at you. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> is it when will Dara O'Brien succumb to my advances? <laughs> <laughs> is it? <laughs> Um, the number of times that Madonna's tried to adopt me. <laughs> Is it the year that this episode of this TV show will stop being shown on Dave? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's going to go Is it, much longer than Is it? Much longer. When, when do experts think that Dappy from N-Dubs will be able to read? <laughs> Have you Is seen it? When, Have you well, seen what he looks like? He looks like an Asbo noddy. Yeah. <laughs> Can we, can we move it? No, I'm going to move it to a correct answer. Is it in what year of the IPCC mm. predicted that all the ice would disappear from the glaciers in the Himalayas? That's exactly right. Well, well done, well, Thank you very much. <laughs> the question I was looking for, by what year did the UN's climate science panel wrongly assert that the Himalayan glaciers would disappear? This is a story that the UN's climate panel, the IPCC, ignored warnings by leading scientists not to publish false claims that the Himalayan glaciers would melt by 2035. So this is a false claim that yeah. they made, which is mm -hmm. a stupid thing to do. Where mm -hmm. did they get their information you know what they on? They based it on? They based it on a dissertation from a geography graduate. They based it on an article in the climbing magazine and a chat with an Iraqi taxi driver. <laughs> <laughs> Essentially, yes. The, uh, it was from a climbing... Uh, and it was from a climbing magazine. Do you know what the climbing magazine was called? Rocks! Was called glacier, <laughs> glacier climbing... Climb rocks! It's not climbing, you're not far off. Eat my rocks, Yeti! <laughs> Is it just called climbing? It was called climbing. Well, yeah, it's called climbing. climbing. <laughs> yes, it was an article in Climbing magazine and a geography student, yeah. which yeah. does make it seem like a 14-year-old learning off the names of rivers. Excuse they, uh, me, I'm a, I was a geography student and I did a dissertation. <laughs> did you do a dissertation? Did you get picked up by the UN at some stage? No, I did the I did a dissertation on this. I did it on the spatial distribution of elementary education in 19th-century Wakefield. <laughs> It won that year's award for the world's most tedious dissertation. <laughs> I've, got a, I've got a really tasteless joke about carbon emissions. Start the car. <laughs> That's yeah. it. I, I actually... <laughs> 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 What surprising figure has entered the climate change debate? He's a soul of Bin Laden. Yes. yes. You see, he's an environmentalist, you see. All his suicide bombers are locally sourced. <laughs> but it's, it's so bizarre, though, isn't it? Finding out that Osama Bin Laden cares about the planet. So difficult to get your head around. It's like finding out Boris Johnson's northern. He's also a different face, and most of the work he claims credit for is kind of airplane based. Yeah. Uh, what, what he must well. have done after 9 11 is just planted trees. He, he, he carbon offset 9-11. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, released another two videos. He's, he's putting out more stuff than Michael McIntyre, for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> 
I saw his Hello Kabul, and it is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was actually an audio tape, wasn't it, that he sent in, he as opposed to a video tape, which he normally sends in. Mm. So it appears we haven't hit Osama bin Laden, yeah. but we have hit his video camera. <laughs> What did he claim, by the way, in the previous message? That the Detroit bomber uh, was the trouser bomber at Christmas Day, was a hero. He, you know, he failed. All he did was scorch his nads. It, <laughs> it makes you think, how bad are the other suicide bombers? They go, Osama, I have a plan. It's an ejector seat for a helicopter. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> he actually did, he, apparently the guy, uh, Umar Farouk Abdulmutalab. Well uh, done. Thank you very much. I thought there was a reason Please. you were chanting that earlier. Yes. Uh, <laughs> no, no, that, that's not what I was chanting. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Did you see me chanting? No one should have seen me chanting. Uh, that's important. He was, uh, my it, that's my cover blow. <laughs> the, uh, but the uh, Umar Farouk Abdul Mutalab, uh, it said, uh, as a claim in the questioning, said, there will be 20 more like me, yeah. he said. Which I think was meant to scare people <laughs> yeah. who would have gone, no, 20 more like the guys in 9-11. We'd be scared of that. Yeah. 20 more people who set fire to their own arse. <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> we can <laughs> handle that. Who said that again? Uh, Umar Farouk Abdul Mutalab. Yeah, I love the fact that when people say his name, they just like the, when newsreaders get his what name right, it's What's like they name? want to high five each other <laughs> yeah. or something. Like, yes, look at me. But it's just <laughs> a name. Like, I, when I was um, a little kid, I called up a radio station right to win tickets, Marking. and um, I, I told the I got straight through to the radio DJ right. So I told I told him my my full African name, which is Yewande. It's three syllables. Anthony. That's three syllables. Stephanie. So, and he said to me, "I'm really sorry. I can't pronounce it. I'm going to call you Joe." <laughs> he didn't even try. He didn't exactly. even try. But the thing is, when I think back about this, right, I, I, I hope that there's an equivalent uh, of this situation happening in Nigeria. Do you know what I mean? Like a little English kid is calling up a Nigerian station and going, oh, hello, I'm calling up for some... OK, you're going to be on the air soon. What's your name? Charles. Cheese. Charles. Cheese. I'm sorry, I can't pronounce that. I'm going to call you Umar Farouk Abdul Mutalam. OK, you're on the air. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's, that's a great point. That's exactly... Exactly the reason why, when I'm uh, entering radio competitions, that I don't use my African name either. Right. <laughs> what did Tesco ban this week? Tesco have uh, banned pajamas. Sainsbury's. This yes, is basically is. what's happened. You know, some lady said she wanted to wear her pajamas and got turned away. She for said it. brilliantly, though. Well, she said um, he d they don't realise how difficult it is. I've got three kids. I haven't even got time for a cup of tea, let alone getting all dolled up. <laughs> Dress code? <laughs> Dress code? Are you kidding? Well, those are the customers at my Tesco. Don't even have a DNA code. <laughs> I'm here all week. One of the people who, who's, who was said, turned away uh, said, uh, we was only popping in for a pack of fags. If we was doing a proper full shop, then we obviously would have gone in clothes. <laughs> I mean, there is a kind of a thing that she would go, listen, it's only fact. And there's kind of a point. Like she did go on to say, she did go on to say, I've, a, I've got lovely pairs of pyjamas with bears and penguins on. <laughs> I've worn my best ones today just so I look tidy. Uh, <laughs> she's made an effort. Yeah, she's she's no she's problem. Problem. I'm people slagging her off saying that, you know, yeah. she just got out of bed. But no, she put them on specifically. Yeah. <laughs> she wouldn't have worn her second-rate pyjamas. No, 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 that would have just been a chavvy disgrace. <laughs> <laughs> Like, what I like about this story is that it has uh, all the ingredients of a right old classic British carry-on movie ding-dong. <laughs> and on top of it, the supermarket where it's actually happened is a part of Cardiff called St. Melons. <laughs> <laughs> I hope this doesn't happen at my Tesco, because I sleep in the nude, ladies. Yeah. <laughs> why, is it, why, 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 why is it ironic that Tesco would complain about this? Uh, because they sell push-up bras for six-year-olds? Mm, no, that's <laughs> not, <laughs> not why it's ironic. Well, Martin, Martin Clunes. Martin, Martin Clunes has done an advert in which he's in pyjamas. And he walks, in into, walks out of his house in pyjamas, into Clunes. a Tesco, oh. in pyjamas. Yes. You, go, you <laughs> advertise this! You said it's OK. Oh, it's OK for Clunes to do it. All right, fine. <laughs> Joe Geard, funny man, Martin but, Clunes. It's yeah. an advert. It's not real life. Meerkats don't wear a little waistcoat. <laughs> Gorillas aren't really excited about drumming. OK, at the end of that round, the points go to Andrew Hughes Stewart. Yeah. Now we come to scenes we'd like to see. So if everyone can make their way to the performance area, please, I'll read out this week's topics and then we'll see what our panellists can come up with. OK, here we go. The first subject is... Mm. Unlikely things to hear in a fitness video. <laughs> Oi, we're going to Ross Kemp on leotards. <laughs>
Now I'd like all you ladies to turn around, face away from me, bend over and touch your toes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm Madonna. I'm a 50-year-old woman with the body of a 40-year-old man. <laughs> Hi, I'm Michael Owen. Welcome to my fit... Oh, no, it's gone again. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Masturbate Yourself Thin. <laughs> Remember, swap arms or you'll end up looking like a wonky Popeye. <laughs> Want to have the type of body to drive your friends' wives crazy? Hi, I'm John Terry. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, today I'm on a Swiss ball. Uncomfortable, particularly for the Swiss man it belongs to. <laughs> hey, want to lose weight and gain a friend? Why not insert a tapeworm? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm the living proof that you can exercise yourself straight. <laughs> Everybody wants a six-pack. I do, and I've already had five of them. <laughs> Hi, I'm Cheryl Cole. Welcome to my Boxercise video. Now, for this first workout, you're going to need a Nigerian toilet attendant and a really good lawyer. <laughs> OK, go on, see if you can raise your leg as high as I can. I bet you can't, because I'm Heather Mills. <laughs> <laughs> OK, the next topic is... Unlikely lines to hear in a Hollywood blockbuster. Nemo, where the fuck have you been? <laughs> Look, Mr Bond, do you want to hire the Ford Focus or not? <laughs> Mr. Vader, we are the Child Support Agency. <laughs> you want the truth? You can't handle the truth. Welcome to the Fox News Channel. <laughs> Warning, this film contains Jennifer Aniston. <laughs> Spider-Man, look out! It's rolled up newspaper man! <laughs> Excuse me, sorry, where do you want to go, Hans? <laughs> it he got bone. <laughs> M, I've worked out what to do with Goldfinger. What we do is we put him in a big envelope, mark cash my gold. <laughs> what do you think of my father's for justice costume, Robin? <laughs> Cracking heroin, Gromit. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I'm just an ex prime minister standing before an Iraq inquiry asking them to love him. <laughs> <laughs> oi, 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 Hermione, Kokos in Gorgio. <laughs> So this mission is impossible. <laughs> Let's not bother. Andy Dufresne. When he walked into Shawshank, I knew he was fucked. <laughs> Revenge will be mine, Mr. Bond, when we meet in small claims court. <laughs> Use the force, Luke! And if that doesn't work, Turn it off and turn it back on again. <laughs> OK, at the end of that round, the points go to Russell, Andy and Andy. <laughs> and that's the end of the show. This week's winners are Andy Parsons, Andy Osho and Russell Howard. <laughs> Commiserations to Andrew Macho, Hugh Dennis and Stuart Francis. Thank you for watching. I'm Darwin. Good night.
string vest and a pink silky g-string. You've got to see it to believe it. Rapsi Nesbitt is next. Then the comedy continues on BBC Two with Bellamy's People at 10.